translated as God. We must know what Allah we are talking about. Does not the word Allah, you ask anybody, you say, I believe in Allah. What Allah? Does the word. This whole book is there to find out. He doesn't have time. So you must understand when Allah says we believe in Allah. And what is being revealed to us? The revelation to us. What revealed to us? Have you read the book? Yes, I've read the book in Arabic. Do you understand the book? No, I don't understand the book. Do you believe in the book? Yes, I believe in the book. What believe in the book? Do you read the book, this Bible? Do you read it? No. Do you believe the book? No. Why? Have you read it? No. What is this? You say that you have not read this Bible and you don't believe it. You say you have not read the Quran, but you believe it. What sense is that? Nothing. You are making a fool out of yourself. That you say we are not and I don't understand the book, but I believe it. Whom you are making this answer to Allah? You see, in, in when I was in, in very childhood, you can memorize little booklets and you get you can get you can pass the exams. The the teacher doesn't know. You have memorized that booklet and you pass the exams. He give you good marks. Now if somebody thinks that he can memorize this book and on the last day Allah is asking him questions and he's, he doesn't know what to answer because he's memorized he doesn't know he can't explain so what memorization means with translation with understanding for any question I told you they say say so you must know all that you just memorize it and you think you'll go to Jannah and not only me, this I'll take aid with me because I'm a hafiz. Of course, you are a good hafiz, then you must know what you're reading and understand the message so that you can transfer this message to mankind, to other people who don't know. That was the purpose. So when the revelation given to us means what you read the Quran, the contents of the Quran, when you understand, that is the revelation understanding given to you. So we believe in that. Say we believe in Allah and the revelation given to us, we believe in that. And what was given to Ibrahim, wa Ismail, wa Ishaq, wa Yaqub, wa Asbaq, wa ma utiya Musa wa Isa, wa ma utiya Nabiyuna min Rabbihim. That all this revelation given to the prophets, all the prophets, Khatam al Nabiyin included, everyone. And we do not make distinction among the prophets. We are Muslims. The Jews made a distinction. The Jews made a distinction that holding fast to Moses. Oh, we believe in the Moses. He is the way to God. The Christians made a distinction. They are holding fast to Christ. They say Christ is the way to God. We Allah said, La nufarriqu bayna hadim minu. We do not make distinction among the prophets. We are Muslims. We believe in Allah. We believe in Allah and all the prophets we have to follow. We have to follow and take guidance from all the prophets. We do not make distinction between one another. We are Muslims. So Allah says in the first ayah, next ayah, فَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ فَقَدِ اِهْتَدَوْا so if they believe, so if they believe as you believe, meaning you don't make distinction among the prophets, if the way that you believe, so if they believe as you believe, meaning that you don't make distinction among the prophets, they are indeed on the right path. They are indeed on the right path. And if they turn back, it is they who are in schism, in separatism. But Allah will suffice thee as against them. And He is all hearing and all knowing. So we Muslims have to believe as mentioned in the Quranic ayat. If we do not believe like that, we are in schisms, in separatism, 
as the Jews and the Christian are today. This ayah, I will recite the last ayah of my talk. It is a dua, we can say, or a call, or a prayer of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Surah Baqarah 2, ayah 1 to 9. Ibrahim alayhi salam is mentioned in the Quran as the, we are, we are following the Millate Abikum Ibrahim. He is the father of religion is mentioned in the Quran if anybody wants to know the reference Surah Hajj 22 78 ayah I'm not quoting that you can note down that he's mentioned as the father Millata Abikum Ibrahim the Millat the system the way the cult is of our father Ibrahim so he was raising the foundations of the Kaaba in in Quran Majid in Surah Baqarah 2 and 129 in the context of the ayah his Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam is raising the foundation of the Kaaba and he prays to Allah and this dua this I am going to recite you must look at to those words they are very very important you must understand those ayahs every word is a very important word it says, Rabbana wa ba'ath fihim rasoolam minhum yatlu alayhim ayatika wa yu'allimum al-kitaba wal-hikmata wa yizakihim innaka anta al-azizul hakeem. O our Lord, send amongst them a messenger of their own who shall rehearse thy signs to them and instruct them in the book and wisdom and sanctify, and sanctify them for you are exalted in might the wise our father Ibrahim is praying to Allah to send a messenger amongst the people referring to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam down in the histories he's been he's been asked for a messenger Rabbana wa ba'ath fihim rasulam minhum yatlu alayhim ayatika O our Lord said amongst them a messenger of their own who will recite your ayats not his philosophy your ayats wa yu'allimuhul kitaba and he will give knowledge of the book he will give the knowledge of the book wal hikmata and he will he will preach in wisdom where you zaki him and he will sanctify them in antal azizul hakim for you are exalted in might the wise so this do i our call or prayer for rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam all the message is the practice the sunnah of all the messengers is to recite the ayat number one instruct the people in the book instruct people in wisdom and to sanctify and purify people with the wrong concepts with the wrong ideologies prevailing in your minds that is the job of the messenger and the sunnah and the practice of the messengers is this to recite the ayahs of Allah instruct people from, from the book and to sanctify them and purify them and to instruct it with wisdom what is your job the muslim world no prophet is coming after muhammad peace be upon him no prophet is coming after muhammad peace be upon him the contract we have seen it we have to follow the guidance so our job is to recite the ayahs talk about the ayahs give the knowledge of the book to the masses of the world they still don't know the quran because we don't know we don't know the Quran. How will you convey the message to the majority of the world which, are, which do not know the Quran? Not by printing it and sending it to Russia or China or Japan. We are doing the job. 
just printing this book and spending. I am I am meeting hundreds of people who say we want to send this Quran to the world. I said, do you know yourself? No, no, I don't know. At least I'm sending it. Allah will give me sabah for that. You are making other people Muslim. And what about you? Very surprising. We must know the book. We must know and practice the book and recite the ayats because these ayats converted Saudi Arabia in, in history because of these ayats Islam spread throughout the world the deadness is because we do not know the book we are led by the nose by the people's ideologies every people who talks about their own concepts how would we understand who is speaking the truth a man can never speak the truth no man can speak the truth only Allah speaks the truth only his ayahs can change people's minds and ideas the taskia the purification so this lecture of mine was based on the status of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam his advent then his coming how did he convey the message what was the message conveyed and if he's not in the world what he left for us to promote is the Quran we must understand the ayats and not only understand talk about those ayats maximally promote those ayats because it is the ayats by virtue the Muslims have can convert otherwise they are just converting according to your ideologies and schools of thoughts that is not Islam so I end here with any question pertaining to the topic whatever I have delivered you are most welcome but I don't know if, if the time of Ish, uh, Maghrib is almost there okay then we, we can have question answer session any question you can come over to the mic and ask any question pertaining to the topic and any clarification thank you very much Jazakallah. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, before I come over and explain to you the procedure that we follow for the questions and answers session, uh, I would request you that you have been provided with the paper in your pamphlets to fill up your name and address. I understand that many of you have uh, given it at the reception, uh, but those of you, ladies and gentlemen, who have not done it, please do so. Give it at the reception. That is for our benefit. Thank you very much for this and uh, regarding the question and answer session the system or the procedure that will be followed is that we'll have two mics one on the side of the ladies one on the side of the gentlemen any of you who wants to ask a question will have to restrict himself or herself to the procedure that we lay down here and the procedure is that you come over to the mic Please restrict your questions strictly to the topic of the lecture that has been delivered today. And the topic was, as you all know, what Al-Quran says about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So please, I would request you to come over to the mic, straight away ask your question which should be strictly related to the topic. Take your answer. If you want to ask the second question, you go back and take your turn again so that means a lady or a gentleman gets only a chance to ask one question at a time please I will exercise the option as the secretary here to turn down very politely your question if it is out of context please if I do so do not take it to your heart please do not mind it because we have to have certain restrictions so that everybody gets a chance to follow and get the answer. Okay, I am told now uh, that we have only one mic, so it's better that we use this mic and uh, turn by turn, one at a time, once a lady, once a gentleman can ask your questions from this mic only. So you're most welcome. All those with questions are most welcome now.
السلام علیکم میں عبد القیوم خان ہوں یورپ میں رہتا ہوں میں عبد القیوم خان آئی لیو ان یورپ آئی کم یور ٹیمپریری آئی بین ویری ہیپی ٹو سی دیٹ ان پاکستان دیر آر لاٹس آف آرگنائزیشنز پروپیگیٹنگ فار اسلام اسپیشلی دا ون دیٹ ہیز آرگنائز دس لیکچر I understand from this lecture the basic theme is to appeal to all the Muslims, present and non-present, to practice, to learn first of all what is in the Qur'an, what is about Prophet, how he dealt with, he led his life, and therefore appealing to all of us to know this and to practice it. While appreciating the organizers here of doing all that, whatever they can put in practice. My question is, is it possible for the organizers to start the proceedings of the lectures at the time that they announce? Is it not the fundamental teachings of the Islam? Is it not the practice of the Prophet? Whatever he promised, he fulfilled. This appeal is to the audience also, they should come in time so that the organizers do not have to say that they could not start because of, because of the lack of the audience. This is a vicious circle. If the organizers start, even though the audiences are not full, the hall is not full. Audience will not be able to say that they started early. Please, can anybody among the organizers of the audience say that is it really impossible to practice this injection of Islam to keep the promise, especially in time when they start the, or the, uh, start the proceedings on time. Thank you. This is the question with regard to Surah Hameem 41, Ayah 43, which says, uh, the Quran says that we are saying exactly the same thing which was being said by the other prophets, and the prophet is not saying something new. Among, other, among us here, it's generally a concept that Sharia Islam supersedes all the previous Sharia. So there seems to be some conflict between the two things. Would you please clarify this point? Uh, in the same lecture, if you go to Surah Shura, I'm sorry they don't have the page. I think on the fourth page. Can you check up with the booklet? Fourth, fifth, after the question, Hamim. Seventh page. That is Shura 42 and Ayah 13. And I read Shara. You were talking about the Sharia. The word in Arabic is Shara. Lakum min adini. ما وصى به نوح والذي أوحينا إليك وما وصينا به إبراهيم وموسى وعيسى أن أقيموا الدين ولا تتفرقوا فيه. The translation is the same shara, the same shara has been established for you. The word in the Arabic is lakum, meaning plural of all times. Shara lakum means the same shara. Minadini from the religion for you is the same which he enjoined on Nuh. Ma wasabi Nuhum. That which he which we sent to thee by inspiration, that is Prophet peace be upon him, and that which we enjoin on Ibrahim alayhi salam, Musa and Isa alayhi salam, namely that you should remain steadfast in religion and make no division therein. So it is the same shara according to the Quran. 
the shara never change the same shara the way but if somebody says there is a difference so i can quote you in the same surah same surah shura 42 i will quote you the ayah surah shura 42 and the ayah is ayah is 21 surah shura 42 ayah is 21 and the Arabic is Am lahum shuraka'u shara'u lahum min ad-deeni ma lam ya'adam bihi Allah wa lawla kalimatul kalimatul fasli la qudiya baynahum wa inna al-zalimi lahum adabun alim Now Allah says in the ayah what have they partners in Godhead we have that who have established for them some from the religion a different shara what have they partners in Godhead who have established for them some religion without the permission of Allah and the, in the Arabic is different shara, shara. Had it not been from the decree of the judgment, the matter would have been decided between them at once. But verily, the wrongdoers will have a grievous penalty. So in the Quran, in Surah Shura 42, Ayah 21, Allah said there are people who have made different shara. So because the Quran says they have made it, so they will be accountable on the last day. But Allah says He has sent the same shara to make there no divisions. Now they cannot quote a Quranic ayat to say that. SubhanAllah. Surah Bakra 2 La nafarraku bayna ahadim min hum wa nahanu lahu muslimun You said Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also included We make no difference between one and another of them And we are Muslim But, uh, but from the childhood we heard that Mr. Uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the leader of all the uh, Prophets you said the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam included. There is no difference. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Nabiyo ke sardar hai. What do you say about this? The question asked is that the gentleman is saying from the very childhood he has been taught that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, peace be upon him, is is the leader of the prophets. It would sum up to like that, that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the leader of the prophets. So now, I read you the ayahs in my lecture that Allah gave him the status of khataman nabiyyin. He is the seal of the prophets. That is the status given by Allah Almighty to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as the seal of the Prophets. So, but the question is that, is he the leader of the Prophets? So now, he, you cannot surpass the law of Allah because if you translate the word leader or Sardar in Urdu may be Sayyid in Arabic and if you say Imam Imam is also referred in the Quran which means some people translate as leader so Allah says in the Quran Surah Baqarah who is your Imam? Why? In Surah Baqarah 2 Ayah 124 Why did Ibrahim Rabbu bi kalimatin fatammahunna and remember that Ibrahim was tried by his lords, which he fulfilled. Allah said to Ibrahim, I will make you, that is Ibrahim, to the nations, the Imam, the leader. So Ibrahim, the status given to Ibrahim is the Imam, the leader 
of all mankind. So that is the status given to Ibrahim al -Islam. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the status is Khatam al nabiyyin the, All the prophets, you believe them, you take the guidance from them, you understand the seal of the prophets. That is the honor. But the Imam, the status is given to Ibrahim al -Islam. Now you can't change that status from Ibrahim and put it on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You have no right to do that. And on the contrary, in Surah Anbiya 21, Ambiya is 21 surah and 72 ayah. I read for you. Sorry, 73 ayah. Surah Ambiya, 21 surah and 73 ayah. In the context of this 